Greetings from the workshop again. Uh, another one of these interesting videos, at least interesting to me, is how we take the unreliable point system that's on these bikes from the factory and convert them into a modern electronic ignition system. So, first thing is, uh, the point systems here have a number of common failings. As they age, the carbon brushes inside wear out, and I'll show you that in just a minute. Uh, the condensers go bad and also because the actual backing plate that holds the whole assembly is only held in by three Phillips head screws, they tend to slip and the timing goes off on the spark, so you lose spark on the bike. So the easiest way to fix these is to use a kit from Danatech, in this particular case for a Z1000, um, it's the DS2-1 and it replaces the entire ignition system here uh, from points and condenser into a modern electronic ignition system. So without further ado, let me pop the cover off and I'll show you what the OE stuff looks like. So you're just gonna remove the dress cover on the top. Now that is an original OE point system and just for reference so you know what you're looking at, these are carbon brushes here and here. This shaft rotates. These will open and close depending on the position of where the shaft is. And these are the condensers. So they basically store electrical charge and then they'll fire that charge through these two leads out to the here, creating your spark. That then runs up this green and black wire, which is rooted underneath the engine side cover around the kickstart up along the top of the frame up to these guys right here this is our green and black which are connected to the coils so that's how the system is set up from the factory and as i say there's a number of common failings in here so let me show you what this looks like off the bike right we've got the oe components off so let me show you the various bits that's the backing plate. This is in fact two parts, well, multiple parts, but at least two, the backing plate and the actual points mounting plate. So they're two separate plates. You've got the special bolt, don't lose this, and the special locking nut, don't lose that either, that holds this whole assembly onto an adjustable cam, which you can see will open, it's spring loaded, so that will open as it rotates. Worth noting on here, you've got the position for the two and three cylinder and the one and four cylinder. So this is how you set your timing up. And the Japanese engineers at Kawasaki were smart enough to think, let's put a notch in the back of this so that when you're setting your initial timing, you just use that dowel pin to mount in there. So that's how it sets up for that. So how do we convert this original OE system? And for those who know this particular business, you know I love the OE stuff. The only time we replace this is when there's a reliability or safety issue in play, and that's the case with this. So what you do using the Danatech kit, they supply a replacement for this piece, and this is a rotating magnet. I believe the technology that's actually used here is called a Hall Effect. And this spins, and instead of having moving parts in here, so these opening and closing and having to set these gaps and these condensers failing, the Hall Effect, which spins in here, is fixed. It's permanently fixed. So that is the only moving part. So you do away with condensers, you do away with brushes, you do away with backing plates that are held in by three Phillips screws, which as you can see do not age well over time, unlike me. You do away with all of that and you can see all that complexity on there. And if we look at the Danatech kit, literally two pickups and a backing plate using the stock spinny thing here, which is basically a cam advancer. So how do you do this? Using the Danatech supplied spinning thing, that's the technical term, you pull this open and you just slide off the OE component. So this sleeve is the, the factory sleeve. You then use the Danatech sleeve and line that up with the K 
cam lobes, which is a little fiddly, but let me see if I can do it, like that. So you've replaced OE with Danatech. That is now going to be the only thing that's spinning. Literally, single point of failure, but when you consider multiple points of failure in here, it's a much, much, much improved system. All right, so what's next? Well, next thing is, this needs to go back on the bike. So we use that dowel pin that I mentioned earlier, and we use that slot to align this on the back of the back of this uh, dowel pin right here. So you can see that that will just slot in there. And then this whole assembly, this is the really beautiful part, uses the stock, stock nut and washer right over the top like that, so it's a little fiddly to do from this angle. And that bolt, which is the OE bolt, fits right the way through. So let me show you the assembly before I fit it. So you can see that spring-loaded opens and closes. That's all held in with the special nut and bolt. And this whole assembly goes onto the output gear here. So let me just make sure I've got it lined up. Now obviously you have to torque this up because it's going to be spinning and we can't do that without putting the engine in gear and locking this in place but essentially that's what you're dealing with on the inside so that's your only bit that moves and that can, that's advanced spark and retard. And then you fit your supplied mounting plate directly over the top. So again this is a stock opening, we're using the stock cut out here and we use the stock screws, even if they do look a bit rough, to mount this up. And the, the position of this plate actually doesn't matter because you're only going to set your timing um, using the Hall effect. So as long as the plate is, is within distance, so in other words, this gap is fixed, as long as it can actually sense or create that Hall effect, you will have a spark and then it's simply setting the spark up so you've connected up the, the points and the supplemental power correctly. So that's going to go in up top. All three screws are the same by the way. Finger tight, do not use power tools on any of this. You've already seen that the screws unfortunately get a bit of a battering and they do not age well so never use power tools particularly on stuff like this. So you just want to get that nipped up. We can, we can give that a little adjustment around the corner here. Let me just back that off so I can align that. I might have to back all of them off. I just want to nudge that over slightly. So basically you just want the screws more or less centered, probably more for aesthetic purposes than anything else. And again, we're just doing this finger tight for display purposes. And then the final one down here. lift that up. Come on. Okay, I might want to pause that mate because that's... Okay, so backing plate is installed. Apologies, the screws were giving me a little bit of a hard time. They're just old screws. Uh, so you can see the backing plate is fixed. These have adjustment and they uh, do have an Allen key supplied. So you can move these if you need alignment up or down. But check this, this moves freely. Uh, so it should be fine and we'll find out once we spin the bike up. And then obviously you're gonna take your, um, your cable, <coughs> pardon me, and that's gonna be routed around the engine cover here, underneath the kickstand, up around the frame, exactly where the OE stuff went. And in the supplied wiring diagram, you have your pickups here for what would have been black going to black. Um, in this case, 
green, we have white, and then we have power going here, which runs off of this double connector there. So it is literally a drop-in replacement. Um, it's probably the best non-OE mod that we can recommend on an ongoing basis. <clears throat> Pardon me. Um, again, because there are no moving parts here, you've, you've eliminated all the issues with brush wear, carbon buildup, um, condensers failing, old wiring stuff, uh, particularly, and this is worth noting, this gets abraded over time. So as it runs underneath the engine here, it gets hot. Obviously the exhaust system's gonna be here. You can see also that the rubber that is supposed to hold this in place on the engine, engine cover has failed and you can't really replace this very easily. You can also see that the wiring here, the sheath is breaking. So very, very cheap upgrade, less than $100. Uh, $100 US, I should hasten to add. So what is that, about 150, 160 Aussie? This will last longer than the bike and probably outlive you, which is a bit of a scary thing, but absolutely the best upgrade you can do. Simple money, you saw it yourself, in my case, that's the extent of my hand tools. Um, I don't think I have, oh yeah. And uh, the center nut, obviously right here, will need to be torqued. And that has to be torqued up to the spec that's in the book. But that's the same torque spec for this device, the Dana Tech DS2-1, as it would be for the standard points that came on the bike from Kawasaki. So there you go. Home tip, you're welcome, do this without delay, and cheers Dana Tech for making these products so easy to install, making them so reliable, and pricing them so that the average working Joe, or Alex in this case, can afford to do these on the bike. So thanks again, and Happy New Year everybody. It's the year of the dragon, so it's gonna be an absolute ripper. And stay tuned for the next video. There's some very, very big news coming. Yes, it's a tease, and I'm not gonna tell you now, but stay tuned. Cheers everyone. See ya.